Close your eyes and think of the most prolific playoff scorer of the last two seasons. Were you thinking of this guy? Over his last 17 playoff games, Donovan Mitchell has dropped an incredible 36 points every 75 possessions on 64% true shooting. And after sifting through the tape, I'm left with one key question. Was that just a hot streak? Or does Mitchell have a playoff gear that makes the Jazz offense nearly unstoppable? Mitchell has always been a shifty penetrator, bouncing around the lane with these herky-jerky dance steps and rocking defenders with hard, sharp cuts. But in the last few seasons, he's leveled up, turning into a basketball version of Barry Sanders, leaving defenders grasping at air with his violent cuts and ankle-buckling Euro steps to the basket. In a sport where height reigns supreme, Donovan gets lower to the floor to move defenders out of his way. His lateral movements are so abrupt that he looks like he's doing a cone drill here, and he uses this mesmerizing footwork to punch holes in the defense on his drives. This time he sends Yusuf Nurkic up to check the weather, and Mitchell's so low to the ground, he'll occasionally drag his back foot as he slices through opponents. This one starts with a crossover, then he gives Anthony Edwards the treatment, and Donovan's handle has really tightened up over the years, matching his ridiculous change of direction agility. Here's one where being a compact six foot one is an advantage, with crosses so low they scrape the floor, yet he's vertically explosive too with a 6'10 wingspan. This time he throws a Tim Hardaway combo at his defender, who sells out to defend the second crossover. So Mitchell says, if you like my crossover, you'll love my in and out dribble. I'm worried someone's gonna get hurt on these. And then again, he has the aerial skills to finish around wings. All these sharp directional changes take a ton of body control and strength. And Donovan has enough power on these to just drive through contact and still glide into his moves. You can see some mind-bending lower body strength and balance here, taking an enormous stride to the right, which somehow powers him up and through the bigger Jimmy Butler. Put it all together and you have a player who can chisel and carve his way through the paint to score or spray passes out to his shooters. These kickouts make him incredibly difficult to defend because he's surrounded by some of the best marksmen in the world. These are three-point percentages from the last three seasons on wide-open shots, according to NBA.com. And the Jazz have featured three of the top 50 high-volume marksmen over that period, with a fourth, Royce O'Neal, making a ton of threes at 40%. So when Mitchell's setting up a drive, if you don't slide over to build a wall, he'll explode into open space and he can finish through the contact. But if you bring defenders over to help, it's an easy drive and kick game for him to yet another 41% open shooter. He doesn't have the relentless rim pressure of Ja Morant. For instance, he patiently moves this defender with a ball fake to set up an easy corner pocket three. But like Morant, his ball handling can take him deep into the paint before sending it back out to his sharpshooting teammates. Some of these are Michelin star dishes, vacuuming in three defenders before whipping it out, and that speed gives Bojan Bogdanovic more than 15 feet of space, and sometimes you're just too open. In the last few seasons, Donovan's upgraded penetration game has made him a more dangerous paint scorer and a more effective playmaker when collapsing the defense. But opponents can't just sag off him, because he's quietly one of the deadliest shooters in the league too. Here's that same shooting data we looked at earlier, where Mitchell clocks in at nearly 44% over the last four years on wide open threes. And these aren't just run of the mill spot ups either. He can drain them off of movement, and he has some extended range on his quick rise and fire jumpers. Even with increased difficulty compared to a typical specialist, he's still converting catch-and-shoot threes at around 40%. Additionally, in the last three years, only eight players have taken more pull-up threes than Mitchell, and among the top 50 volume pull-up shooters in the league, he's 16th in shooting percentage over that time span. 
If you play something like drop coverage and sag off the screen, Mitchell just jukes defenders out of the way and ends up with an extremely high value shot. He even has a little step back he'll bust out at times, and you can see the incredible lower body strength on a jumper like that. Although for the record, he is a bit too liberal with his trigger at times, launching these at off balance angles, or sometimes firing really early in the shot clock. I don't think Bradley Beal can contain him with all that space, but Mitchell lets him off the hook. And we let him off the hook! On the flip side, he doesn't take too many difficult long twos, so those can serve as a really nice curveball to throw at defenses once in a while. He has made 46% of his long twos outside of 15 feet in the last three years, which is another healthy indicator he's a really good shooter. Donovan's also no slouch as a passer, able to hit dynamic reads like this, and he'll even throw in a little manipulation at times, using the look away in transition on this dime. So you can't sell out on his drive because he can shoot. All of that space makes it extremely difficult to contain him off the dribble. And on top of that, he'll make plays once he gets into the paint, which makes the entire offense difficult to slow down. All of Utah's outside shooting lets them space the floor for five out sets that stretch defenses. They also have multiple ball handlers who can create off-screening action with a big man like Rudy Gobert. Jordan Clarkson, Mike Conley, and even Bojan Bogdanovich can run ball screens with a big man and take advantage of all that empty space the shooters provide. Early pick and rolls, open drives, and quick threes, and notice where Mitchell spots up from because of his range, pulling his defender a few feet higher on the floor so he's not in the same position to help. Meanwhile, Conley can also use those screens to play a two-man game. Gobert's size makes him a very effective screener, and that springs Mike for his patented righty floater. Rudy is also a big target if teams switch the pick and roll. Conley can't hit him, but Ingles has a better angle on that entry pass, and it's a dunk. So there are a ton of interchangeable parts out there, from shooters to ball handlers to extra passers, and Utah constantly flows into new screening actions or keeps the ball moving to pressure defenses and constantly keep them on their toes. The Jazz love this quick hitting pin down screen for a curler, effectively creating an empty side pick and roll where there's no one to cover the giant lob target in Gobert. And if you run that with someone like Mitchell and sit on the lob too hard, Donovan just takes it himself with that nice finishing ability. I also love how they use three-man actions in the middle of the floor, a screen for the screener that turns into a double screen where Bogdanovich can flare out for an open three. Here's the same action for Clarkson, who reads the defender's overplay, so he flares out to the line, and that flows into a Gobert ball screen where Clarkson can pull up with a ton of space. These three-man games create tons of options. Bogey can also curl off that same screen, and that can flow into a pick and roll, and he uses his strength to hold off a defender before finding a near layup. Here's something similar for Conley, he doesn't rub off Gobert, instead going straight to a screen, only he ghosts that screen, which creates a momentary advantage. Gobert might be open with a great pass, but then that just frees up the corner, and even though Royce takes an extra dribble or two, it still finds Conley for another open three. Here's Donovan working off staggered screens this time, and he's good enough as a passer to sometimes find pay dirt like this. This one's a twist on one of their three-man sets, with Bogey screening for the big man, then popping to the three-point line while Mitchell gets a ball screen, and watch Donovan look at Bogdanovich to freeze the defender, and that is just gorgeous offense. This one looks like a pick and roll, but it's really a little handoff in the corner with Gobert setting a middle ball screen, and now the deadly Mitchell is open, and he's good enough as a passer to touch this home to Rudy. I really like how Mitchell's skill set organically amplifies this offense. Here's that high spacing, and he uses the defender's momentum against him and his speed to collapse the defense, freeing up an open three. This play stalls out a bit, and it's a great little adjustment from Mitchell, 
ball faking primarily to allow time for his screen to arrive, and then this defender lunges to guard the pull-up, and Mitchell's too quick and cruises in for a layup. That's the other thing about having all these ball handlers. When plays fizzle out, the Jazz have a ton of options late in the clock. According to Second Spectrum, they rank first in offensive efficiency in the final six seconds of the shot clock, where Conley can attack himself or fall back on a late pick and roll with someone like Gobert. Clarkson isn't the most efficient isolation scorer, but he can generate something decent in a pinch too. And of course, there's Donovan, who's also deadly in the pick and roll game and can use his agility to slither into the paint. So all of this explains why Quinn Snyder's Jazz have by far the best offense in the league this season. But what about the playoffs? Without Mitchell, the Jazz have posted a healthy 112 offensive rating this year. But with him, the number jumps to an eye-popping 121 points per 100 possessions. It's a similar story in the last two postseasons, where Utah has gone from a 114 offensive efficiency with Donovan on the bench to a ridiculous 125 points per 100 with him on the floor. It's also worth noting that the Jazz actually outscored their opponents by 5 points per 100 with Mitchell, but were outscored by 8 points without him when he went to the bench. Even though that's a small sample, just 17 games, it's compelling because of how this offense plays and how Mitchell's physical advantages are so difficult to take away. First, his quickness punishes any lapses or non-elite defenders within the flow of the Jazz offense. But even the best defenders in the league don't have easy answers for his athletic Euro steps and choppy change of directions that free him up for really high percentage three-pointers. Against Phoenix, the long and venerable Mikhail Bridges didn't fare much better trying to stay in front of him, leading to more highly efficient offense. One approach might be to trap him with bigger defenders, since Mitchell's height makes it harder to pass out of big double teams. But Donovan's actually pretty good at handling these traps, especially with all that shooting around him. He can just move it along to a teammate who can shoot or make that 45 degree pass to Gobert rolling down the lane. Mitchell also makes up for his lack of size by leaping and launching passes over his head to create better angles. And a corner skip pass like that gives the Jazz an abundance of options. Miami sends Bam out of bio out to bother him here, and he still sees the roll pass and loops it over the top perfectly. And against drop coverage, he'll just comfortably walk into a procession of pull-up trifectas. Maybe too much shooting will actually derail Mitchell in a playoff series, falling in love with all these long jumpers when his shot is a bit off. And at the same time, he's not good enough as a playmaker to offset those poor shooting stretches. He probably has a lob to go bear here. And on this one against Joel Embiid, he underestimates how good Embiid is at playing the pass over the top. Still, we know he can make really nice reads out of pick and roll, and with all of that space around him, his driving game and his own shooting give the Jazz some serious offensive firepower. Utah also has defensive concerns against small ball lineups that are outside the scope of this video, but their opponents still need to find a way to slow down this offense so they can actually outscore them. And if Donovan Mitchell is healthy, and playing at an all-NBA level, that might not be so easy. And if he's on fire, he just might be able to swing a playoff series all by himself. If you want more content, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. We have proprietary stats that update daily, video extras, a community discord, and more. Let me know your thoughts on Mitchell and the Jazz down below. Do you finally think they can reach the conference finals this year? Otherwise, thanks as always for watching, and I hope that you are having a great day.